Hey everybody, Ryan Gronfin with The Retro Boss. Today, we are going to be talking about bacon, but more specifically, we're going to be talking about cost of goods sold sub accounts and what actually is a cost of goods sold and what should be a direct operating expense. Today is March 20th of 2023. We're coming to you live from the world headquarters of The Retro Boss, just outside of Austin, Texas. And I get this question a lot, so I thought I would share it with you. Now, whether you are using our software ClickBacon or not, whether you are using QuickBooks or however you are accounting, I still think there is incredibly valuable information in here for you because this is just the standard correct way to set things up. And then more specifically, I'm going to show you around bacon. So I have a couple of rule of thumb. So like I said, first we're going to discuss sub accounts, what should be a sub account and what shouldn't. And then we're going to discuss what is actually cost of goods sold and what is not. My first rule of thumb, I have two. When it comes to cost of goods sold sub accounts is one, your sub account must have sales. Well, actually every cost of goods sold account has to have sales which offset purchases. If you just have purchases or you just have sales, there's no point of tracking that account because you're either going to get a 100% cost of goods sold if it's a purchase account with no sales or if it's an account that has sales but no purchases, you're going to get a 0% cost of goods sold. So there's no point of tracking that until you do a roll up. But then if you're gonna do the roll up anyways to the parent account, What's the point of tracking the sub account since it doesn't give you any good information? My second rule of thumb when it comes to um, sub accounts is that we never write in a parent account. So if you look here, when we look at like, we get my mouse over here, wine, liquor, and beer, bar beverage is the parent account. Now, QuickBooks will allow you to write into parent accounts. We do not at ClickBacon. Um, we just don't believe you should ever write into a parent account. If you have sub accounts, then you should only write into sub accounts and then roll it up as a parent. So here is a great example. Other than merchandise and other, which we just happen to have in this account, I don't like other accounts and merchandise. I don't really know if you should track that as a cost of goods sold. It depends on how you buy your merchandise. If you buy your merchandise like once every three or four months, you probably just shouldn't track it because you'll go from a massive cost of goods sold when you buy to no cost of goods sold for like four months until you buy again. So it kind of throws things off a little bit, but let's look at wine, liquor, and beer. These are perfect sub accounts to bar beverage because wine has sales and purchases liquor has sales and purchases beer has sales and purchases so when we come to a dashboard we are able to look at our beer cost on its own we're able to budget for beer on its own purchases and sales we're able to look at liquor we're able to look at wine or we can look at it as a roll-up same thing when you're looking at your monthly overview we can look at wine individually liquor individually beer individually or in this case we don't do the roll up here but you can get the roll up in a report but the point is because those have its own sales and purchases those are great examples of when you should use a sub account now beer is an interesting one sometimes we'll do bottle beer and draft beer that's up to you but wine you can't do bottle wine and glass wine unless you buy different bottles for glass and for bottle. Because if you buy, let's say, a case of XYZ Chardonnay, you may sell XYZ Chardonnay as a bottle or you may sell XYZ Chardonnay as a glass. And so you have no way of knowing how much of the wine that you bought went to a bottle and went to a glass sale. So in that case, where it's different than beer because your bottled beer gets sold as bottled beer only and your draft beer gets sold as draft beer only, your wine get, or I'm sorry, gets purchased. Your wine gets purchased as one and sold as two. So don't get tempted to start doing glass wine and bottle wine, but you could 
do draft beer and bottle beer? The place that this question comes up the most, and I don't understand why people like to do this. Well, I do understand, but I don't, is with food. People love to email us and ask us why they can't do or why they shouldn't do poultry, beef or meat, dairy, dry goods, freezer as sub accounts of food. Well, I think I answered that question already, but if I didn't, it's because you don't sell chicken. You sell a chicken dish that is made up of all kinds of food. It's gonna have dairy, it's gonna have chicken, it's gonna have dry goods, it's gonna have all kinds of stuff on it. So there's no way of knowing what your chicken cost is or your dry goods cost. It's all food. Also, it doesn't really matter. Like, if you want to know how much you spent on chicken last year, which again, I don't know why you would want to know that, but if you did, just run a report from your vendor. The whole point of bacon is to simplify things, not complexify things. That's complicate and complexify and I forget, whatever. It's not to complicate, complexify things, it's to simplify things. So keep your bacon accounts as simple as possible. Some of you may use QuickBooks. And again, if you want to track your chicken purchases, I don't know why. If you want to track your dry good purchases and your freezer purchases, I don't know why. Other than the fact that maybe your purveyor breaks it down that way for you, but just because they do it doesn't mean you need to do it. They do it for very different reasons. They do it so they can charge you more in different categories they don't do it because they care. I mean, they do care. They care about where they could mark it up more, but they don't do it for the reasons that you think they do. Now, my point is, if you keep track of it that way in QuickBooks, then all you have to do when you map your accounts into Bacon from QuickBooks, let me see if I could, um, I don't want to do it because I don't want to reveal this person's account. We have it blocked out. But then you can map all of your chicken purchases, all of your meat purchases, all of your freezer purchases, all of your dry good purchases to food. So then that way you're, all of those purchases get rolled up to food and all those sales get rolled up to food. So then you'll get a very easy food cost. One last thing on this before we talk about direct operating expenses, catering, catering, banquets, offsite, third party, those are not costs of goods sold accounts. Those are departments. If you want to keep track of departments, you can keep track of departments in Bacon. I don't think you really necessarily need to. I wouldn't recommend it generally because again, if you want to run a department report, just run that from your POS system. The only reason I could think of is if you just, honestly, I can't even really think of a reason why you would keep track of departments in bacon well actually that's not true um if you wanted to know your per person average per department would be a reason why you would do that but the point is you could if you want to i don't suggest it see banquets or catering or third party is actually food and beverage when you do a catering event what you're really selling is food when you sell something on DoorDash, what you're really selling is food and beverage. You're not selling DoorDash, you're selling food and beverage. So the problem is if you had a DoorDash account as a cost of goods sold, again, it would have income, it won't have expenses, so then you can't calculate a cost of goods sold, and it would also throw off your actual food costs because some of your income is going to DoorDash, not going to food where it should be going. So there's a lot of different ways to do this in your POS. And my suggestion is if you can't figure that out, shoot a message to us, support at the restaurantboss.com. We'll do our best to answer that question for you, or we'll send you to our accounting partners, Cirrus, who are the experts at restaurant accounting, and they'll be able to help you with some better solutions. Now, the second part that I promised you in this video was regarding what is the cost of goods sold and what is not. I've already told you like catering and stuff like that are departments, but some things get a little more confusing, like supplies, like let's say bar supplies. 
the question you have to ask yourself is, is the bar supply required in 100% of the drinks that you sell? Like a cocktail napkin, let's say. If you always put a cocktail napkin down with every single drink sold, then arguably you could include the cocktail napkin in your recipe, which would make it part of your liquor sales. I think a bar napkin is a little excessive. I would just put it as a direct operating expense under supplies of some sort or under operating expenses is how this client has it set up. Um, there's other ways that you can do it, like facility expenses, which obviously a napkin isn't a facility expense. So they have operating expenses. I sometimes prefer to call this restaurant expenses rather than operating expenses. It's the same thing. It just makes more sense to me. But then you can see smallwares, bar supplies, cleaning supplies, general supplies, kitchen supplies, etc. So if you order a whisk, it goes under kitchen supplies. It's not a cost of goods sold. If you order silverware, uh, pots, pans, right? It goes under all of this stuff. Chemicals, you'll see paper goods here. So a better example might be a to-go box. If you have a pizzeria and 100% of your pizzas go in a to-go box, then I can see the argument for making a to-go box part of your food cost. If you have a sit-down pizzeria and only some of your pizza goes in a to-go box, then without question for certain, to-go boxes is not a cost of goods sold. It's a direct operating expense. So my rule of thumb when it comes to is it a cost of goods sold or is it a direct operating expense is do I use it 100% of the time in every item that I sell or not? If you do, then it's part of the recipe, which makes it part of the food cost or the bar cost, the beer cost, etc. If not, then we put it in direct operating expenses. Now, the good thing about bacon is you can still budget all the way through to, I don't know if this account is set up with it, we go to a full year budget. Um, yes. So like in this account, we have budgeted them all the way through all of their direct operating expenses. Now, in the reason I wasn't sure, because in Bacon, we allow you to minimize your budgeting for direct operating expenses. So you can just do like operating expenses, which I call restaurant expenses and facility expenses rather than each particular line item. So that's a setting that you can change in bacon depending on which you prefer. So I think we've covered everything I promised I would cover you today. I hope this video wasn't too dry for you. But again, what I really want you to understand is if you're not going to take action on the data, don't track it. If you're not gonna budget the data and hold yourself or your team accountable to that budget, don't track the data. It's just more and sometimes more is just more. So to recap here today, right? Things like chemicals, paper goods, plastic wrap, sponges, whisks. Those are generally some form of a direct operating expense. And then sub accounts, when we look at things like wine and liquor and beer, those are sub accounts of bar beverage. But things like catering sales or uh, DoorDash third party, those are departments. And then things like chicken, dairy, those just should not be sub accounts. They shouldn't be in here. I hope this video was helpful for you. I want you guys to know that I love every single one of you crazy restaurant people. It's my pleasure to answer all of these questions for you and to help you out. I wish there was someone available to help me when I was trying to learn all this stuff. I had to read all the books and do all the research and figure it all out on my own. So it's absolutely my pleasure to help all of you. And remember, systems create freedom. Freedom creates value. Value creates scale. If you want to learn more about bacon, go to clickbacon.com. If you want to grab a free copy of our book, make it happen. Head over to the restaurantboss.com and there'll be somewhere for you to click to get a free copy of that book. We'll mail it out to you as soon as we can. Have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye. Make It Happen is the book I wish I had when I was operating restaurants. Inside are the lessons that took me 10 years to learn and 10 more years of teaching to perfect. I've condensed the most important lessons into this tiny book 
for building a big restaurant business. I am on a mission to improve restaurants all over the world. Because of that, I wanna send you a free copy. Grab yours today at therestaurantboss.com.